this lesson, we are going to discuss word problems on projectile motion. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to perform calculations on projectiles launched horizontally and at an angle. Let us first review the four equations that we are going to use for projectile motion. We have the displacement along x or range, horizontal velocity, displacement along y or height, and vertical velocity. These four equations can be used for projectiles launched horizontally and at an angle. Let us now look at the first example. A little girl throws her jackstone ball horizontally out of the window with a velocity of 30 meters per second. If the window is 3 meters above the ground level, then what is the range covered by the ball? To start solving this problem, let us identify the given quantities and have an illustration for better visualization. First, we have the initial velocity which is 30 meters per second. Second, we have the height of 3 meters. We are asked to solve for displacement along R or range. Although not mentioned, we can still include acceleration due to gravity as part of the given. Gravity here is a positive sign because as the projectile moves downward, its velocity is increasing, thus accelerating the direction of the gravity. After identifying the given quantities, we can now proceed to the solution. Let us look again at the four formulas to identify which formula is used for this. We cannot directly solve for the range because we do not have a value for time yet. Thus, we can use either the height formula or vertical velocity formula. But since we have a value for height, we are going to use the height formula. In this example, the projectile is already at its maximum height or h. Thus, we can omit the initial height. And since the projectile is launched horizontally, theta is equal to 0. Getting sine 0, we would also have 0 for the product of v0, sine theta, and time. Thus, this becomes omitted. We are left with height is equal to 1 half of gravity times time squared. Substituting the values, we have 3 meters is equal to 1 half of 9.8 meter per second squared times time squared. To isolate time squared, we divide both sides of the equation by 1 half of 9.8 meters per second squared. Thus, we have 2 times 3 meters all over 9.8 meters per second squared. To get time, we get the square root of both sides. We can cancel meters and the square of time will be cancelled too. Thus, we have 0.7825 seconds. We used 4 decimal places because it is not part of the unknown values, and this will also increase the accuracy of the final answer. Since we have the value for time, we can now use the range formula. Substituting the values, we have 30 meters per second times cosine 0 times 0 0.7825 seconds. The unit of time will be cancelled and we will be left with meters. Simplifying this expression, we will have 23.48 meters. This example is an example of projectiles launched horizontally. For the second example, we have a long jumper leaves the ground at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal and at a speed of 6 meters per second. How fast is the jumper moving horizontally? How far and high does the jumper go? Let us again identify the given values for this problem. First, the angle of release is 6 degrees. Second, we have initial velocity of 6 meters per second. We are asked to solve for three things here. First, the horizontal velocity. Second, the range. And lastly, the maximum height. We will include gravity again in this given. But in this case, it has a plus minus sign because it depends on the direction of the projectile. Let us now solve for this problem. First, we can directly solve for the horizontal velocity because the other components are given. Substituting the values, we would have this expression. Calculating this, the horizontal velocity is 3 meters per second. Second, we will solve for the range and height. However, both require time. And the only equation that could give us the value for time now is the vertical velocity. Although we didn't have a given value for the vertical velocity, we know that at some point, its vertical velocity would be zero. And that location is at its maximum height. Thus, we can substitute the equation as follows. Zero for v sub y, six meters per second for v naught, sine 60 for sine theta, negative 9.8 meter per second squared for gravity, and the unknown value for time. Gravity here is negative because it is still opposing the pull of gravity at maximum height. To isolate time, we should first subtract 6 meters per second sine 60 to both sides of the equation. Next, 
to completely isolate time, we should divide both sides of the equation with acceleration due to gravity. Before calculating the answer, we will first cancel meters per second. This gives us 0.5302 seconds from the ground to the maximum height. Take note that this time is not the complete time of traverse of the projectile because we use the maximum height or half of the pathway as reference. With this, we can now solve for range and height. To solve for height, we are going to use the height formula. Cancel the initial height because the point of release is in the same level with the landing area. Plugging in the values, we are going to have this equation. To get for the unit of time, we cancel seconds for v0 sine theta times time and seconds again for one half of gravity times time squared. Calculating this, we have 1.38 meters as the maximum height of the projectile. Lastly, to solve for the range, we are going to use the range formula. Plugging in the values, we will be able to cancel seconds. Thus, we have 1.5906 meters. However, this is only the distance from the point of release up to half of the range because this is the time where the maximum height will be reached. To get the total range, we need to multiply it to 2 because it will still take the same time to complete the other half of the pathway. Thus, we have 3.18 meters. This problem is an example of a projectile launch at an angle with the point of release being on the same level with the landing area. Now, let's discuss this problem. A volleyball player receives a service ball at 30 degrees and at a height of 2.10 meters at 3.40 meters per second. What is the maximum height that the ball will reach after being hit? For this problem, we are given the angle of release of 30 degrees. The height of 2.10 meters stated in the problem is not the maximum height. Rather, it is the height where the projectile was launched. Thus, we have h0 is equal to 2.10 meters. Lastly, v0 is equal to 3.40 meters per second. We are asked to look for the maximum height of the projectile. Again, we will also include the value for gravity. We are going to determine which sign to use later. Just like in the previous problem, since time is needed to solve for the maximum height, we need to solve first for time. Thus, we are going to use the initial vertical velocity again. And since it is easier to get the half of the time of the projectile, we will use the maximum height that would give us a zero vertical velocity. Substituting the values, we have this equation. To isolate time, we will subtract both sides by v0 sine theta and divide both sides by gravity. Gravity here is negative because it is at the maximum height. We can now cancel these units to leave seconds. Therefore, the time it takes for the ball to reach its maximum height is 0.1735 seconds. We used 4 decimal places again because this is not yet the final answer. Lastly, to solve for height, we will use the height formula and substitute the values for the given. We can cancel seconds from v0 sine theta times time and seconds squared from 1 half of gravity times time squared. Therefore, the maximum height of the ball is at 2.25 meters. This type of problem is an example of a projectile launched at an angle in which the point of release and landing area are not on the same level. Let us now review the following key points for this problem-solving discussion. First, trigonometric functions are used to calculate projectile motion. Second, vertical velocity is zero at maximum height. Third, the sign for gravity depends on the direction of the projectile. And lastly, Initial height is zero when the point of release is on the same level with the landing area. And that ends our discussion on word problems on projectile motion.